I come to you fresh off of finishing the book Spare by Prince Harry, and I don't normally do these kinds of videos, but it's so rare that a book is this kind of moment in the broader culture that I felt like I wanted <laughs> to talk about it sooner rather than later in its own video because, I don't know, this feels like a cultural event. What pushed me over the edge to doing this as a dedicated video is that uh, I was texting with Jess and she was saying that there was such a huge pre-order backlog of audio digital files that they were late getting them out. Digital files. So that just felt like, man, the demand for this must be intense. So what I want to do today is talk about this memoir as a book. I am someone who reads a lot of books. I usually read between 250 and 300 books a year. I really love memoirs. I have read a lot of them in my time. And while I don't think I can really assess this as a royal watcher, I frankly haven't really been that into the royal family. I mean, I guess I don't really understand the appeal, but I'm not British? I know there's other Americans who are very into following them, so I I don't know. I don't totally get it. The first time I really tuned into anything having to do with the royal family was the aftermath of Harry and Meghan getting married and seeing the pretty blatantly racist harassment that they were receiving, that she was receiving. That was really the first time the royals came onto my radar as people I had any like active tracking of. So I don't really, I, I'm not coming at this as like a fan. I really follow the royals. I've seen the Oprah interview. I haven't watched their documentary yet or the Anderson Cooper interview. I'm not deep in the weeds of this. So I can't assess this book on those grounds. I also want to say that some of what I want to talk about with this book as a book is rooted in the way that Harry presents his own processing of imperialism, racism, etc. in this book. And I don't think that I'm the best reviewer to give a full perspective on that. I know that some of my friends who are Black and here on Booktube are reading the book and I'm assuming that they're going to make content about it. So if so, I will link that below. But I've seen that I know Jess is reading it because we've been texting about it and we will do a podcast about it eventually. I saw that Brie from The Lock Book Titian was reading it and I think I saw Ashley from Bookish Realm was reading it. So all that to say, I would recommend as they have reviewing content going up about it, that you check out their thoughts from that angle, because I am not the right person to give a full perspective on that. But I thought we could talk about how I felt this stood up as a book, as an entry in the nonfiction genre of memoir. How does this stack up? Is it worth encountering as a book? I think the answer is yes. And I'd like to talk about the things that I think this book did well. And I'd also like to talk about the opportunities that it missed to be a next level memoir. Baseline, I would probably give this between three and a half and four stars verging onto four because I do think that if you look at this book as a memoir about someone processing their own grief and PTSD from their experience basically as a child star and then their experiences as a soldier in combat, uh, I think that this is a pretty good version of sort of a journey of inner healing and making peace with your past. I think in that respect, it is a pretty good memoir. The book that I kind of want to put it in dialogue with in terms of sort of foils to each other is the biggest memoir that came out last year, which was I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. Both of them, I think, are really processing the psychological impacts of fame on children and the impact of losing a mother early in your life and kind of like the polar ends of experiences one could have with their mother. So obviously, Jeanette's book very pointedly is about what it means to lose a mother early in your life who had a fundamentally pernicious influence on your life. Whereas Harry's memoir is about the impact of losing a mother who was an incredibly important force of good in his life and the loss of her kind of unmooring him from a lot of the stability that he had in the face of basically being a 
very unique flavor of a child star. He talks a lot in this book about the press. And it's interesting to me because ultimately, for people who are saying that this is like a book trying to take down the monarchy, I will tell you he explicitly, towards the end of the book, has the thesis that the problem is not the monarchy, it's the press. Let's put a pin in that and come back to where I think this book could have been better. <laughs> when we get to that section. But he, in a lot of detail, discusses the impact of constant media scrutiny on his development. And for so for instance, I think a good, I mean, there's the obvious ones, right, of the expectation of him as a child to have to have like the stiff upper lip, not cry in front of people and not show any emotion in the midst of grief. Like, that's pretty obvious. But I think that they're one of the more interesting nuggets that he provides is the impact that being labeled in the press as sort of the naughty one and the royal thicko, not thick, but like thick, not smart, how much that really impacted his own self-perception and his sense of trust in the people around him, learning at an early age that things that he did in private could never, he really couldn't ever fully expect them to be kept private, that there was always this risk. Very normal childhood stages of development, so, you know, experimentation with different substances, or basically being a jerk, or <laughs> various sexual encounters, etc. Like, this is all very normative part of growing up, that those were characterized in certain ways in the press. And I think the really devastating thing for him is realizing the complicity his family has in allowing that to happen. So I think that that is really the strength of this book. And kind of how I would, how I'm conceptualizing it is basically a a memoir of a child star who comes to realize that his family cares, I'm not gonna say more, but as much about what he does for the family business as they do about him as a private non-public entity. And that that is really the themes that are hammered over and over again in this is how all of these different people in the family are using each other to try to jockey for a certain position within the public perception and how fear-based it is. I think that that's something that he raises a lot in this book is how afraid the royal family is really of both the press and the public because of the sense of precarity that they have of their position of privilege and influence. For instance, he mentioned, I think at one point that there's almost like a competition amongst them of how many appearances different people can make every year, because it makes them feel like they're earning their keep and kind of securing their position. And I will say that I think as a memoir of child stardom, and then also really the there's a good chunk of the middle of this that reads like a war memoir. I will say in terms of genre, not a particular favorite of mine, so not necessarily something I thought was that impactful or compelling in the book um, as a whole. I, I think it needed to be there to show the journey of who he was. Like basically it's a lot about him becoming an adult. It's a transitional period making him who he is by the time he kind of comes back into the family business and back into sort of being in the public eye again. So it's a necessary transition moment. I personally am just not big on war memoir, but there's a lot in there about kind of finding his sense of purpose and sense of self in his military service. I do think that he, well again, I'll put a pin in something that I wish had happened by the end of this memoir. That doesn't. <laughs> but, you know, I think that that was clearly a very meaningful time in his life, so it totally makes sense why it's there, just not personally the most compelling part. I think what you see by the third part of the book, eventually he really goes to therapy, essentially because Megan says like, the way you're lashing out at me in this moment, I will not stand for. So like, you need to go to therapy because like, this is not a normal reaction. And if you're saying that this is how you've seen people in your family dealing with each other, it's not normal and I will not stay for this. So he does eventually go to therapy and it's clear he's done a lot of work on that. I should say the other thing that I've seen was the series he did with Oprah about mental health, which was actually a really interesting docuseries. So I have seen him talking about his specific journey with seeking mental health. So it's clear from the book that he's done a lot of processing and work. 
on that area of his life. And I think that as a memoir about someone dealing with that trauma and kind of making bold choices for themselves and for their family in light of, of that trauma and basically saying, I'm not going to continue the cycle with my family now that I have one, I think that it's pretty effective. And, and it does, it's a very interesting book because he is a public figure. As with any celebrity memoir, there is just that certain layer of salaciousness. There are a lot of very very telling moments that are recounted. I think that in particular, things that are effective in this book is the way he builds up his relationship with Will and the kind of sibling rivalry that is inculcated in them from birth. So the title Spare refers to how the family openly referred to him. That detail blew my mind. <laughs> but um, just this feeling of them being in competition with each other and Will feeling, uh, essentially Harry's perception being that Will transitions from being his brother who he has some sibling rivalry with to Will conceptualizing himself first as a royal before he is a part of the family. Will essentially eventually like pulling rank on him in certain moments and, you know, playing the games and the press and whatnot, and just the hurt Harry basically feels from that. So I think that that's really effectively documented. And there's sort of early scenes in their childhood that then are mirrored in later scenes between them as adults. And I thought that that was very effectively done. I should also say he mentions early on that his he you know, he's not gonna remember every dialogue, but he'll remember the setting. Like that tends to be what rem sticks out in his memories. I will say he is very, very good at describing settings. That's probably his strength as a writer. Uh, everything else was fine, but he definitely had moments of describing certain places uh, in ways that I just thought were really vivid and effective. So I think those were the things that the book did well. Like, oh, that's what I was saying. The salacious details. There are salacious details in here, um, particularly with respect to his family. Getting that inside view or his perspective on the different dynamics in that family, even just simple things like their nicknames for each other. The fact that he calls his father Pa, his great grandmother he calls Gang Gang, I think. Just little inside moments that I think are just intrinsically interesting. And to me, that's probably what takes us from like a 3.5 to a 4, is that it does have a lot of just salaciousness that makes it interesting. I will say that the moments, I've tried to avoid press coverage of this because I wanted to come to it fresh, but the little moments people have pulled out, I think read very differently in context than sort of the headline. So I would urge you, well, I mean, not everyone's going to read the book, but I guess I would just say like, Try to think of an example. Like for instance, I've seen the headline of people saying like, Will and Harry didn't want Camilla and Charles to get married. And yes, there is a moment where that's being discussed, but it's at one point in time in that relationship. And I'm not saying that he ever fully says like, oh yeah, I'm glad they're married. But you see that his perception of their relationship changes over time. Um, if there's any, I would say the two people who come out looking worse from this, if we want to get into salaciousness, are Will slash Kate, because yeah, I think that for some of the other ones, you can at least in your mind be like, well, they are of a different generation. So maybe that's where some of the horrible behavior comes from. But like, come on, <laughs> Will and Kate really have no excuse in terms of, you know, social awareness and general mores of, let's say, an elder millennial down. So I think they come off looking pretty bad. And then I would say Camila comes off looking quite bad in this, uh, as she appears to be the source of, at least in Harry's opinion, a lot of the negative stories that came out about him and his brother over the years um, in an attempt to bolster her own image. So those are always very salacious and infuriating. Charles, I mean, I already just don't have a good perception of him. So I wouldn't say that he comes out worse in this. I think he just comes off as bumbling and selfish. And also, like I said, there, I do think that Harry paints this portrait of the fear the family has of the public and its perception very effectively in this book, even to the queen. And just sort of this 
tension of them having like these exalted titles and in theory being so powerful and yet being so powerless in the face of the press and in the face of just sort of the mechanism of the institution that keeps the royal family running. So all of that I would say makes it a worthwhile read and is interesting, engaging, a little long I would say, probably could have been trimmed, but uh, I listened to the audio and Harry's narration obviously um, is very engaging as well. What are my critiques of this? What really bums me out about this as a book is that there is so much here that if he, I don't know if he just doesn't have the insight yet, I don't know if he just didn't want to spend the page count on it. I don't know because I'm not him and I don't know him, his heart or his mind. But there is so much metaphorical richness that could have been tapped in this book. Things that he was describing and setting up early on that I kept expecting to get paid off later. So the way that, for instance, his relationship with Will, I think does get paid off in the book of mirroring certain things from early in their lives to later. I kept waiting for that, for example, for the relationship that he has with the continent of Africa, specifically the country of Botswana. It's so clear that he has a really deep love for that part of the world. And there are allusions to imperialism or his family's history or relationship, different people within Africa. So he talks about Bats but Botswana early. Another early setup was him watching the movie Zulu and kind of talking about how the history of this conflict between the indigenous and native peoples of this country that are being colonized, the conflict that they had with their colonizers. And knowing that he ultimately, you know, from what I've seen in, for instance, his interview with Oprah, that he does now have some awareness of things like systemic and structural racism. I thought that those were getting set up to then be like fully head on addressed later on of, you know, I have this relationship and love of this country, of these peoples, of this culture, but my family has been so, is inextricably bound with the things that have made these countries impoverished, has stripped them at times of emancipation and freedom of self-governance. Uh, there, I, I kept waiting for him to take some of these early seeds that get planted and then actually really unpacking them and dealing with them the way that it felt like he had done in some of the more personal areas of his life. I wish that if he was including those things in the structure of the story that it had been more head on unpacked later on because I think that could have taken this book from like a three and a half to a four to like four or four and a half five because I just don't know that he's done the work yet is my guess but like I would lo have loved for him to make those connections in the text because to me that's part of what a really good memoir would do. It would have this full circle moment of thinking about how like oh I really like ex for example early on discussions of hunting and how it's like this really intense ritual like this dude shoves his face into a deer carcass it's a lot. So it's like this really intense part of the royal family's kind of family lore. Then he goes on to be a soldier where he is literally killing people and he like has a he keeps a kill count which I couldn't I think that it was positioned in the book as him kind of taking par a part of how he personally took seriously his duties as a soldier but it was a little odd but anyway he has like all this stuff with violence and then later in the story his wife is getting these death threats and while he does have this moment of insight about how much of his family's connections to each other and significant moments center around death in general I think that that could have been a good moment for him to really pay that off of like okay I'm someone who has done a lot of violence, but now the language and the like the threats against my wife and the stalking and all of this is a different kind of violence. Like I'm just saying, I think a great memoirist could have made some of those connections more explicit. And there was just a lot, there was a lot of rich things planted that could have been you know, brought to fruition with a little more reflection or by spending the time kind of bringing those things together more in the text. He does, towards the end, address the racial element of the violence against his wife or like the threats, etc. Hate-filled rhetoric towards her. So I appreciate that he did that, but I think because in his mind the monarchy itself is not bad, I think it seems like it's holding him back from making some of the logical next steps of connection. And I wonder if it's reasonable to ask somebody to do that 
with their families. But that place and your position are so intrinsically bound with so much pain and suffering and hurt. I think it is, it's work that he needs to do. And I think he has started to do it. But because he's not willing to say like, no, the things that we did were bad. And maybe they were bad enough that like the monarchy shouldn't exist. I think he at least publicly doesn't want to say that. Perhaps he even privately doesn't truly feel that. I don't know. Who knows? I'm just saying when I look at this as a memoir, I don't think it goes there in terms of making those connections in a way that I would hope a really, really well done memoir does. Again, comparing it to I'm Glad My Mom Died, I think Jeanette McCurdy does make a lot of those connections. She sets things up early in the book that she then pays off in terms of seeing how her reactions to things in the past are manifesting in the present and hacking and deconstructing her perception of her mother as being a certain kind of way and ultimately having to reach the conclusion like my mom was a bad mom and that's really painful to arrive at but that is the reality and look I'm not British I don't know if they should have a monarchy or not I'm American we got rid of that like 300 years ago I'm just saying that the things that he is raising point in a certain direction that he seems to not not really want to fully go and therefore I think it kind of weakens some of the thematic content. So anyway, those are my thoughts slash this is my review of Spare as a book. It's really hilarious to see the reactions on Goodreads. I just clicked over there to see what the average rating is. There's a ton of comments spamming, basically calling him like a traitor, whatever, who haven't even read the book, like not even getting into all that. I think it's kind of weird to review bomb something because you don't like Meghan Markle for reasons that to me seem to be pretty obviously racist, but like whatever. But I would say that in general, I think that this is a really hotly discussed book and I will be interested to see more reviews coming out from people who have actually read it. And uh, if you have actually read it, definitely let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let me know if you're interested in reading this or not. And uh, like I said, I, if I can find some other reviews, I will link them below um, from people who I think you should listen to as well. Okay, yeah, I just finished filming and saw that Brie had posted a review. Her review was great, so I definitely recommend you guys go check that one out as well. I will have it listed below. So with that, that will do it for this video, this chatty discussion of Spare by Prince Harry. And if you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below, and I think that that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today and I will just talk to you soon. Bye!